Hey, I'm Michael, and this is Michael in the Middle. It's an intergenerational relational podcast for people who are interested in better human interaction. I'm glad you're here. Hey, welcome into Michael in the Middle for the first time in 2023. 2022 was good to us, Rob. I'm, I'm really happy that uh, we were able to launch this thing. Um, there wouldn't be a Michael in the middle as we know it right now without uh, my friend on the other side of the screen or the uh, at least the screen that I'm looking at. And if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing that as well. But uh, if you're listening via iTunes or Spotify, um, I, I'm just so thankful uh, for my friend Rob Walls and Varnish Media uh, for helping me get this launched. And um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to to talking with Rob here about some of the things that we've been involved in to try to get this launched in the first place. Um, and uh, so welcome, Rob. Uh, it's good yeah. to see you, buddy. Well, thank you so much for having me on here today. Uh, it's not very often that I get to be on this side of the screen. So it's kind of a fun little change for me. Um, usually I'm the one either shooting a video or producing a podcast. And so it's kind of a change of pace. Um, but I am just thrilled not only to be on here today, but it has just been an honor for me for the last four or five months to be a part of um, something that is so personal to you and really um, trying to help you to get in front of more people because I've known you now for a little bit over two decades and you have been one of the, I would say a, a huge influence in my life. And um, you've created a lot of opportunities for me and I'm just grateful to be a part of this. I'm grateful to have intersected with you so many years ago. Um, so I want to take a second. I think that maybe on this a little bit in the last episode, but I just want to brag on you a little bit. Um, this podcast is in the top 75% of all podcasts, which is a pretty huge deal considering wow. that it was only launched four or five months ago. <laughs> and, you know, that's a reaching a lot of people. And I think that that can be attributed to who you are. And um, I was actually just today thinking about how just out of of about everyone that I know, you have a gift of knowing a lot of people, but actually having genuine relationships with a lot of people. You don't just know them. I feel like you actually invest in people. And I think that that is a huge part of the reason why this podcast has blown up so quickly, because you invest in people and they care about what you have to say. Yeah. So, you're, you're, you're very kind. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, for a long time, I thought about doing this and I I wanted to be ready. You know, I wanted to have it somewhat of a finished product. And you and I are still working on launching a website and other, you know, resource through uh, the website. But when we first started talking about this, I, I know you remember that I, I said, I, I want it to be good from the get-go and uh, you certainly were able to help me with that early on by going the extra mile to actually videotape uh you know in in hd uh some of those early sessions and um you know we've we've had to modify just a little bit because sometimes i'm not available and your schedule is busy thankfully you're busy with other clients as well um but uh again thank you for those kind words and thank you for helping me get this going um, Michael in the middle, as we've, as we said from the outset is about uh, providing something for people who are interested in better human interaction. And, um, you know, I, I think we've largely been able to do that, um, based on, you know, the different guests that we've had and, and also, uh, some of the topics that we've been able to talk about too. We've had an age range that is, is pretty cool and, and, yeah. uh, hopefully, uh, even in, in the not too distant future, a conversation that we recorded with our three sons that, 
was fascinating to me. I hardly did any talking, which was <laughs> really, good, you guess. know, kind of cool. And, yeah. uh, you know, we've got, we got one that's on TV and two others that would be perfectly comfortable behind a microphone, comfortable behind a microphone somewhere. In fact, yep. uh, Chad and, and Brian, our two older ones actually did do broadcasting at different times while they were in school at Trevecco. Um, and then Austin ended up being on TV. It's, it's been fun to listen to people talk about the different ways in which certain episodes you know, made more sense to them or yeah. connected better with them in, in, in terms of where they are. And, and Rob, the business that you've gotten into, which I want to talk about in just a few minutes is, is partly des well, maybe mostly designed to help people present things that connect with other people. That's the power mm -hmm. of story through the medium of, of visual and, and media uh, connections. And I, I, I'm just, I'm really proud of what you've done, but it, you, you've had an interesting story before varnish media even came along. I, I like we yeah. do each time. Um, tell me a little bit about your story and how then you got in the middle of doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Well, so I now live in Nashville, Tennessee, um, live probably about 30 minutes away from you. Um, but I spent the first 18 years of my life in a little town called Xenia, Ohio. And um, most people have not heard of Xenia, but I kind of always had a dream of, I've, I'm a musician and always wanted to move to Nashville. Ultimately, in, in some way, I wanted to be a professional musician. Yeah. And um, so I grew up in the Church of the Nazarene um, knew pretty much my life about Trevecca Nazarene University because my parents actually met at Trevecca. And so wow. I, it was a natural choice once I decided that I wanted to be in the music industry to move to Nashville and go to Trevecca. And I think probably like most people, you, you go to college thinking that you're going to do one thing and then life kind of ends up a lot of times taking you down a different path. And um, so I met my wife, Courtney, and that was, has been um, one of the biggest blessings, maybe the biggest blessing in my life and just our relationship. And we have three kids and is one of the coolest things that I've ever gotten to do. It's also one of the most challenging things, if I'm being yeah. honest, but, but it's, um, it's awesome. And so. I have the privilege of working both with businesses and also with individuals on helping them to use their story to influence people and um, ultimately to build an audience and hopefully bring a positive change in some way to the world, somehow solve a problem that people might have. Um, my path has not been, I kind of, I think that we all have this idea in our head of what our future is going to look like. Yeah. And it hardly ever ends up looking yeah. the way that you think it will. In fact, I was just thinking today, this is maybe a generational shift, but my dad worked at the same job for 40 years. And I think that that is, that just doesn't really happen anymore. And so I grew up watching him in the same job all those years. And I thought that that was kind of what my life would look like, but my career has ended up being just all over the place. And yeah. so I kind of, I'll give you a little bit of my background just to bring you to where I am now. I spent a couple of years as a worship pastor at um, two different Nazarene churches. And then uh, Courtney and I have always felt like after having gone to Trevecca, Nashville just kind of has always felt like our home. And so even when we moved away, I think both of us just had kind of this desire that to get back to Nashville. So I was given the opportunity to move that back to Nashville and start working for um, a guy named Dave Ramsey. And um, some people, probably most people are familiar with that name. Yeah. He is, a radio show host 
New York Times bestseller and worked for him for nearly a decade and learned just a ton. And uh, But the biggest thing really that I learned was about myself, and that was that I love stories. I love telling stories, and I love helping other people to tell their stories. And so now I get to do that every day. That's my job is to um, kind of get to know people and try to pull out the gold, so to speak, and help them to have the confidence to put themselves out there in a way that they maybe otherwise wouldn't. I, uh, I love that Rob and, uh, the, the people that you've been able to work with along the way, um, as you eventually established your own business, I, I I'm sure there are a number of stories you could tell about how those different people help shape where you are today. I, I've cited Donald Miller's a million miles in a thousand years as a, as a favorite book of mine. And I remember one of the things I liked best about it is that Donald said that he learned a lot about himself while he was working on this other project. His, his idea was that they were going to make a movie out of blue, like jazz, mm -hmm. the book that he had written, you know, 20 years ago, probably. Um, and in the process <laughs> of trying to figure out how they were going to make the movie, so many other things unfolded in his life, things that he learned about himself and ultimately about really about, uh, um, rebuilding the relationship with his father. You know, I think sometimes, like you said, we, we, we go out and we figure out this is what we want to do with our lives. This is what we think we want to do vocationally and here are the, uh, you know, the one, two, three steps that you take to get to where you want to be with those goals. And, and so many amazing things happen in the process, mm -hmm. maybe of trying to do those one, two, three steps, you know, and, and so it ends up being like something totally different. But all the way along there, you're, you're learning things and you're, you're becoming who you ultimately are and who you're destined to be because of the yeah. experiences that you're going through at the time. Um, does that resonate at all? I mean, can you think of oh, a time yeah. where, you know, you, you bumped into something that was transformational and totally mm -hmm. unexpected? For sure. Um, and it's funny, as you were talking, I, it popped in my mind that several years ago, someone had given me a book. I think it was by Frederick Beekner. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing yeah. his name right. Um, and I think it was called Listen to Your Life. Does that sound it at all? Sounds right. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I mean, it's a great sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. Even just the title kind of made me, when they handed me that book and I looked at it and I thought that is pretty profound because how yeah. often do we just kind of, float through life and we're really not paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's even some, a conversation that I've started to have with my kids regularly is that you need to, even while you're young, you need to start paying attention to what you enjoy doing and what you're just naturally gifted at. Right. And over time you're going to, things are going to start to unfold and opportunities are going to present themselves. And because you know, yourself you have that self-awareness you're going to hopefully get to where you're going where you're supposed to be a lot more quickly than maybe some of us who have <laughs> taken a little bit longer because we weren't paying attention i'm pointing at myself yeah. for those of you who are listening to the audio um but i so that's actually part of my story so i was working for dave ramsey and i was learning a lot but I guess I would say, to use Dave's words, I was in the wrong seat on the bus. Yeah. So I was, I enjoyed working there. I had no complaints about the company or anything, but I was in a position where I was sitting in a cubicle all day, making phone calls and dying a slow, painful death. <laughs> if I could be real honest with you. Um, <laughs> I wasn't getting to use any of my creativity. Yeah. And so I, after quite a few years of just kind of grinding it out, I realized that I needed to change. Yeah. So I kind of was given an opportunity for a short time after that to start doing marketing for faith-based films, which if you've seen many faith-based films, 
about one out of every seven of them does very well. <laughs> and <laughs> that's trying to say it quickly. Um, and that's probably true of, of non-faith-based films as well. But I also, at, around that time, I heard someone say that good marketing makes a bad product die faster. So it was like, if we were doing a good job of marketing these movies and the movie was not good, then that just meant that it was going to bomb quicker. And that was actually what we saw happening. Um, so that did not last very long. I, I did that for about a year. And then on the side, I kind of started doing photography and video um, just for some small businesses here locally. Yeah. And my wife was really the one who was watching this whole thing unfold. And she said to me one day, as the marketing the movies was kind of going down, um, she said, have you thought about pivoting over and trying out this video thing? I love it. And quite honestly, I had not thought about that because I think, you know, be making that leap to working on your own and all the risk involved with that and having a family, it was just, I think, more than what I was ready for at that moment. And sometimes we just need somebody in our lives to say, you're capable of doing this. It's okay. Yeah, to I love that. that. So uh, she was the one that said that to me and and I reluctantly did it and here I am eight years later and I'm not going <laughs> to say that it has necessarily been smooth or easy. It's been the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also been the most rewarding thing and I wouldn't change anything about this whole process of being an That's entrepreneur. So cool. That's so cool. Wayne Gretzky was quoted as saying, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Yep. I love you know, that. I mean, there's all kinds of cliches that you can throw out there with that. But at some point, you can either, you know, the story was told, my friend Dwight Gunner tells it very well as a part of a sermon he used to preach, but he talked about guy out, I think, on the West Coast, maybe near LAX or one of those busy airports out there who – tied a bunch of helium balloons to a lawn chair and ended up in the traffic pattern, you know, and <laughs> control was, I, I don't even know how they ended up getting him down. And they said, what were you, what were you thinking? You know? And he said, well, I just, I just do a lot of sitting around and, and I haven't really ever tried anything big. And he said, sometimes you just come to the conclusion that you can't just sit there. You got to, yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to try something. And, and I guess, I guess I could say that I'm, I'm doing that a little bit, even with this podcast, because I had yeah. plenty of other things that were going on, but, but, you know, sometimes Rob, the thing that we feel drawn to do isn't just about us. Oh, it, yeah. It's about helping other people along the way and your gift for, creativity and for sharing other people's stories through video and audio productions like you do it, it it's a means to an end for you to a certain extent because it helps pay the bills but it's also a gift to the people that you're helping in the process and do you do you ever now and then do you do you feel like you know what? I, I'm really glad I chose to do this because of what you saw happening in someone else's situation, a client or, or someone like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I would even go as far as to say that, um, you know, in church world, we talk a lot about calling yeah. and I, a lot of my years growing up, I was told someday you're going to be a pastor. <laughs> No one ever said, no one ever asked me if that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. That's just what I was told. You're going to be a pastor. Right. right. And um, I've always had a heart for the Lord and want to serve the Lord. And so it was easy for me to kind of get caught up in that. But I've, as I've gotten older, I've realized calling isn't just for pastors. Right. You can be called and do all kinds of things. Yeah. And um, 
So what I have come to realize at this point in my life is that God has a calling on me with where I'm at. And I'm, he, I am purposefully positioned where I am uniquely because I'm able to reach people in a way that a pastor can't. And um, that's not to downplay the role of a pastor at all. Not at all. But um, just, you know, I think that God had a part of my calling as I've really been, because I've spent a lot of time, as most entrepreneurs probably would understand, I spent a lot of time in prayer. Because, <laughs> you know, there are, days, there are days where you wake up feeling like, this is, I just can't believe that I get to do this. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end of the day, you're like, I can't believe that I am doing this. Like, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, and so I think that part of my calling and part of my vision is that God, I think that God has given me is that I want to build something that creates jobs for other people. Nice. That I really think that the Lord is going to bless me financially, not me, not so that I can live some big fat life and drive a fancy car. Not that there's anything wrong with those things. <laughs> yeah. necessarily. And maybe I will have a fancy car someday, yes. but I think that, um, part of, I think that God is going to bless, and I'm already seeing, um, seeing this unfold, that this business is being blessed so that myself and my family are going to be able to bless other families. And um, to me, that is, even if what I'm doing isn't, isn't directly um, ministering or presenting the gospel or anything like that. I think there's a lot of indirect ways that I'm getting to live out the gospel. And, um, and that's pretty neat. It's been a little bit of a journey to figure out that you can have a normal job and that the, God can still use that in a pretty big way. I, I think one of the interesting things for a lot of people who are involved in the church world and by that i mean they go to church on a regular basis or they've been a part of the organized church along the way it's so easy to think about the church being where you go to you know once or twice a week on a regular basis and that's church and if that's all we ever think of in terms of what being involved in the church is is about we lose so many great opportunities to interact uh, with and on behalf of the the church, the 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 body, as it were, and you know this is language that may or may not be familiar to some of our listeners. I'm, I mean, I got to be honest, Rob. I hope that Michael in the middle is is reaching people who aren't necessarily fully acquainted with some of the terms yeah. even that we're using right now, because ultimately I believe that God loves every person just as much as he does the next, you know, this, the outpouring of love and prayers for, uh, uh, DeMar Hamlin, the, the young man that, that yeah. you know, suffered cardiac arrest up there in Cincinnati, not too far from your, your home stomping grounds and all of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, my goodness, it's been amazing how people have just gravitated to this story and how everybody is pulling for him. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm watching this. I think it's just so wonderful the way people have rallied and talking about praying for Demar and and, oh, and yeah. his family and T Higgins, the guy from the Bengals that you know collided with him. That and that that tackle may or may not have had anything to do with the cardiac arrest. I mean, hopefully right. they'll give us some answers soon. But I thought I was thinking even today, what if everybody in the world felt as loved as Demar Hamlin is right now? You know, yeah. I mean, what if what if we looked at people who were going through very difficult situations? And I'm even thinking about some of those players that were on that field that were so traumatized by that. I mean, we need to be praying for and loving, loving them just as much, you know, I, that Absolutely. that's what I really aspire to do with what I'm doing now. And it's what I hear you say, you know, with varnish media that, that you're interested in doing it's to spur one another on to love and good works like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
and the apostle Paul, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Paul that talked about that. I, I, I don't have my Bible open here and, and there will be critics who would say, Michael, you should know every verse in the Bible with, <laughs> <laughs> with reference at the ready, you know, but let us consider then how we can spur one another on one another on to love and good works. I, I love that sentiment and I, I see that in you. I, and, and I can look back over a course of your career, you know, from the time that you were a student at Trebekah and watching you and Courtney, you know, uh, get together and, and, and the way you interacted with your friends then. And then, you know, in terms of the career path that you've, you've charted, that's mainly what you've been about, regardless of what the vocation was, right? I would like to think so. <laughs> 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 that's certainly I what I've, I've seen sure I do better at some moments than others, but, well, but that's, that's part of being human too. Yeah. Um, I want to be loving and kind to everyone when I'm, you know, producing a, a segment of, of Michael in the middle, but sometimes I still want to honk at the guy that cut me off in traffic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. Um, so you and Courtney have three kids. Tell me, Tell me who they are and their ages. And then I want to, I, I got a follow-up question for you. Yeah. So we have two, two daughters and a son. Um, Larkin is our oldest. She is 13. Lorelai is 11. And then Easton is getting ready to turn nine. Yeah. So 13, That's 11, and nine. So, so they're at, I mean, every stage of life is, is significant. And each age has its own has its own challenges and, and opportunities and all of that. But as your kids are getting older and they're moving into teen years and preteen mm -hmm. years, and you look at the landscape of what they're kind of being raised in and, and schooling is just one facet of right. how they interact with the world. But what are some of the kinds of things that you hope that they are getting either from you and Courtney or from your extended family or, or people maybe that you don't even know yet who are going to intersect their lives. What are some of the things that you're hoping for your kids? Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting about raising kids nowadays is that they are having to deal with things that didn't was a kid, you know, yeah. the internet really, we got, my family didn't get our first computer and a, we got AOL when I was 14 years old. <laughs> I had CompuServe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so they're growing up in a very different world than I yeah. did, which means that as parents, we're having to uh, navigate through a minefield where a lot of times it's hard to know exactly how to handle different situations. And, um, you know, I don't, my whole career is based on the internet. So I am not one of these people that is going to say the internet is terrible. You know, right. social media, social media is just horrible. I do think that we as humans can take anything and make it wonderful or terrible. depending yeah. on how. Yeah. Um, but what my, my hope for my kids and really what we're trying to instill in, in them is a sense of confidence and a sense of knowing who they are, a sense of their identity. Because I really have found that I think one of the biggest things that's lacking in, in my generation, and even just anyone that's alive today, I think that having a sense of identity is more difficult now, maybe than it ever has been before, because you have so many different voices telling you who you should be. Yeah it can be really difficult to have the, the confidence to just say, this is who I am yeah. and I have to be that regardless of what other people might think. So I, if I had to say anything, I just want my kids to have a sense of a sense of identity and a sense of confidence in their identity. What about your wife? Tell me, tell me a couple of things that, that, you know, just actually continue to surprise you. Sarah and I've been married 41 plus years yeah. and every now and then I'll look over at her and I'll think, you know, it's just kind of dawning on me. That's something that I really love about my wife 
foot. Courtney yeah. is, is a precious person, and, and I, I'm a big fan of hers. But tell me, tell me something about your wife that encourages you. Yeah. Well, you know, being an entrepreneur and going out, launching a business, you know, there's a lot of risk involved in that. Yeah. I have found there aren't many people that have, I'm going to say courage, but maybe some people would say they have the stupidity <laughs> to go out on a limb like that um, where you have the backing of a business. You're not guaranteed your next paycheck. You know, you're the one and make it happen. Yeah. So not, not everyone is wired to be okay with that. And I've known that for a while, but over the years, I've also started to see in some ways it takes more grit and more tenacity to be married to the entrepreneur than to be the entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause she's having to, she's having to take the risk, the same risks that I'm taking, except she's also having to put the trust in me that yeah. I'm going to be able to make it happen. And so she's in a lot of ways a much more difficult position than I've ever been in. And so whenever you meet a, the spouse of someone that has started a business or started a nonprofit or any type of venture, I think that um, I can tell you that that spouse, um, in a lot of ways, they're the ones that are making things happen. Even if they're not doing the actual work, on the days where I'm discouraged or the days where I feel like I just can't keep doing this. Yeah. He's the one that's like, you can do it, you know, just keep pushing. You've got to, you can't give up. And so I would say that she is um, one of the biggest encouragers that I've ever met. And also she's driven in a way that most people are not. Um, <laughs> And that's just, you know, becomes more and more clear. And also she's very patient. And, yeah. Um, you know, I am, I'm sure that there are days where she is having to put on a happy face. To keep <laughs> <me going. laughs> yeah. um, now I'll say, I feel like I'm almost making this sound like starting a business is, is such a hard, terrible thing. My, our life is wonderful because of it, but there's also a price that you pay yeah. for anything in your life. Um, I, I would yeah, say I, I, I love that. I think it's so, so cool, you know, that you've been able to find that balance for, for, for you all and, and to, uh, to be able to work through that together. I mean, I, I just think that's super cool. Um, and, um, I love, I love how you've been able to steadily work through these different stages of, of the process. And one of the things that I wanted to say to you in terms of complimenting the kind of work that you do is, is the, the word, uh, unflappable, uh, kind of comes to mind. I mean, you're, you're steady. You're, you're, you're going to be able to, I can depend on you to, to follow through. And, uh, yeah. sometimes creatives, you know, they have the great ideas and they have the, the ability to flower a presentation or a room up, <laughs> but, but sometimes it's a challenge too, to meet deadlines, do those kinds of things. And, and I think your personality has lent itself well to helping people be creative and telling their stories, but you've also been able to help them get it out there on time. And I, I've always appreciated that about you. So um, as we kind of start winding it down here, there there may be some people, um, I, I'm certain there will be some people who are listening to this uh, or watching this who've never met you before. Mm -hmm. What's, is there something, you know, in particular that you would, you would want to share that, um, you know, just kind of encapsulates maybe what you hope for the future, not just for your business or your wife and kids, but is there, is there something that you think about sometimes that I'd really love to see this take place? Yeah. Well, you know, 
I'll try to frame this in a way that kind of stays with the theme of putting ourselves in the middle. Um, we are, as you've said many times in this podcast, in so many ways, we are divided as a culture, yeah. as a society. And so I love the idea of finding ways to bring people together. I love that that has become a mission for you because I feel like that, that alone could change so many things in our world. If we learned to see, you know, even if someone maybe believes a little bit differently, or even if they believe a lot differently yeah. than I do, if, if I would attempt to, I could probably find a lot of commonality with that person. Yeah. And, um, so I think that there are some people like yourselves, a lot of people who have the giftedness and even I would to go back to the calling conversation, have a calling on their lives to play a role in bringing people together in some way. And I think that part of my calling and part of my, one of my passions is to help people to almost get out of their own way. So I like that they that. will do the thing that they're on this earth for. And it's of um, time that you get on here to record an episode, you're putting yourself out there. You're taking a chance on being yeah. scrutinized. You're taking a chance that someone's going to say, I didn't like that episode or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know, anytime that you put yourself or behind a microphone, you are taking a chance that someone is going to not like what you're doing. In fact, if everyone if everyone likes what you're doing, you're probably not doing it right because it's impossible to, you know, reach everybody. You're you shouldn't be reaching everybody. But I think that one of my passions and one of my gifts, I would say, is being able to, like I said earlier, the gold in people and try to help to pull that out and give them confidence to do something that they're supposed to be doing. And so I would, to bring that full circle, I would say if you're listening today, there's a good chance that you have some area of giftedness in your life that you are, that's un, an untapped area. And you probably are aware of it. And for some reason you have, there's something maybe keeping you from putting yourself out there. Maybe you're, you're scared that you're going to fail or you're scared that you're going to be criticized. But I just feel like everybody, every single person is put on this earth for a reason and has a unique gift given to you by God. And you need to find what that thing is and you need to be using it, even if it's scary. And even if there's a chance that you may fail, you need to be finding what that thing is and doing it. I love that. That's so cool. If people want to get in touch with you, um, it's varnish.media. Is that right? Yes. Got it. it. Is, so that's the website. And this that's always confuses people. There is no dot com. It's just dot media. I thought that would yeah. be cooler to have media. And that has yeah. caused so much confusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's our website. Um, we do have an email address. Um, if you have questions or anything, it's info at varnish.media. And um, we love working with people, but I just also love answering questions. You know, I don't think that necessarily everyone needs to hire a marketing company. I think that sometimes there are things you can do on your own. So I love, love helping people. That's uh that's so cool. Info at varnish.media. Rob would uh, be happy to talk to you. I, I, I know this about you. You'd, you'd love to help them out, you know, in terms of your business, but you like having conversations about this thing too, you know, just Absolutely. the whole process. And, and I happen to know that you're pretty busy these days, but uh, it's always good to, always good to get another client. So I would encourage you folks, if you, if you have needs in this area to, to get in touch with Rob. Um, 
thank you, bud, for taking time to be here with me this week. And uh, yeah. we'll uh, we'll be thinking okay. about an appropriate song title to attach. And a, I meant and to a say that earlier. I'm, that's one of the things I'm most ex excited about is seeing what song you choose for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, for me, um, it's it's uh, it's one of those things that I I have loved music longer than any other medium. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, it, I remember as a kid, radio stations that my parents listened to and and songs that I heard at talk radio, KTOK in Oklahoma City was was pretty big for talk radio even back in the day. But um, they also played a lot of uh, of some of the great true country western texas swing kinds of songs and yeah and i fell in love with songs through the church and through records that my my parents played i can remember a lot about that and i i've, I've sincerely believe that music connects in a way maybe that nothing else can and so when oh, you man. hear a song man you can remember where you were and and why that song is important to you and so yeah yeah song titles i i had some people encourage me you know not to use song titles people who are in the <laughs> podcasting business say you really people are going to be thinking about the song title more than they are about the the content and i said well you know what if if i did it like everybody else did it then it it, it wouldn't stand out in any way and 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 yeah. i so i've kind of taken a chance you know running with that just a little bit but um you know what i what i ultimately hope to do and you've been helping me do this is to create something that's somewhere in the in the middle of all of that no pun yeah. intended people have been able to remember something in their in their past or something you know about a, a significant moment in their life and sometimes a song title is enough to kind of rekindle that yeah, well, I'll even I'll give you an example of how I feel like I actually think it's working really well because every time that I um, hear "Yellow Rose of Texas," I picture your mom's face, and I never even <laughs> met your mom, but just because of seeing that together, I love that. I think it's working. I mean, yeah. I know that I maybe would have discouraged you from doing it to begin with, but I think that there's something really cool about it. And like I said, I'm yeah. excited to see what you come up with for this week. Thanks again, Rob, for being here uh, with me. And thanks for all you've done to help me get this thing going. And, and, and I would say, you know, thanks on behalf of the people that have been tuning in because I do think there've been some people, I know there've been some people because they've sent me notes and told me so that it's, that it's helping make a difference. And that's all we want, man. We just want to help. That's what Michael in the Middle is all about. We'll see you next time here. Thanks again, Rob. We'll see you, buddy. Thank you, Michael.